Hi everyone, this is Anna with Scrapping, Stamping, and Stuff. Today we are going to make, I would call this somewhat of an advanced project. This is definitely not a beginning level project. Uh, and it is a matching card and wall hanging or piece of wall art that I thought these turned out just absolutely beautifully. And I had a challenge to make something for a milestone in somebody's life. So I chose to go with a graduation present, but I think something like this would be really great for lots of things, for a wedding, a graduation, um, anniversaries, just, just any type of big event in somebody's life. When you want to do something personal, something special, and you can make a nice, nice hanging that could go somewhere in their house as well as a matching card. So I want to show these to you up close because there are lots of details here that may be a little bit hard to see, not up close. Um, we've got some iridescent splatters in the background and that's what I wanted. One of the things I wanted to make sure you saw because you may not be able to see it from a distance here. You can see some of those. So I'm going to show you how to do this project has lots of different techniques. So let's get started. And I'm not going to explain anything about the card because everything I did for the card is basically the same as on this. I'm going to show you how to make the wall hanging. The only thing I will show you is this is the stamp set I use to make the greeting. Everything amazing, which I love this because you can use all of these different phrases to fill this in and use it for a lot of different purposes. So it can say, you are an amazing friend, wishing you an amazing birthday. You will do amazing things. And there may even be some other ways to mix those up too. Uh, but that is what I use to make the card, show you how to do all the different techniques and the die cuts and all of that. And then you should be able to make the card as well. So this has kind of a, a, quite a few different steps. Hopefully I can keep them all together in order and do these things in a way that pieces are going to be dry when they need to be dry. And, and yeah, I'll just show you how to do it. So here is my white cardstock I'm going to use on the background for this. And I decided to use shimmer white, shimmer white cardstock because it allows the color, we're going to do this watercolor background, it allows the color to flow around a little bit better than our other cardstocks. So I've got a piece of five and a half by eight and a half shimmery white cardstock. This is our silicone sheet, I think it is called, that I am going to put water and ink color on here. And that's what we're going to use kind of as our palette to ink up the background. So here, we, I have lots of scrap paper around here. We're going to make a giant mess. If you are not a messy person, if, you, if you're not okay with a mess at your craft table, then this may not be a project for you. I will warn you of that first. So I want to wet my silicone craft sheet. And I don't want a ton of water, but I think you can see pretty well how much is there. If you want a, a decent amount of water, you, the whole thing does not need to be solid covered with ink by any means. And then we're going to use two ink refills. I decided to use Mint Macaron and Pool Party. And I am going to go around and just drop some of this ink into the water. And I decided to do it kind of in patches. So I'm going to have some patches that are mostly mint macaron. I'm going to have some patches that are mostly pool party. And I think my pool party is trying to run out on me. Now that I have those, I tried it just like that once or twice. And you get really, really solid colors of of or solid patches of color if you do it that way. So I want to go back and just sort of add a little bit of water or spread these ink, ink droplets out just a little bit so that I don't get those really dark patches of color. And clean out my aqua painter from that ink. 
now we are ready for this. I think I saw a video the other day called smooching. This might be called smooching. I'm not really sure. Uh, it's just a watercolor background. So I am just going to lay this on here. I'm going to press it. You can see some of the water coming out on the edges. I am going to lift it up. You can see what we have so far. And now I'm going to repeat that one more time on the part that I didn't do yet. And this will probably turn out lighter than the first patch. And I am okay with that. I don't really, I don't want it to look the same all over. I want it to be darker on the bottom and lighter at the top. So that is what it's going to come out like. Now, I have a few drops of water that are collecting on the edges. You can either set something on this to lay it flat and let it dry, or I am going to try to encourage this to dry so that we can move on with our video. So I'm going to blot it. This just speeds up the process. And you can use your heat tool to blow this dry if you want to. I'm going to set it aside while I do a couple of other things. And then we will bring it back in here. I want to wipe off my craft sheet. Get that cleaned up. This is my stamp and chamois that I use to clean up basically everything. So we got that ready. Now I'm going to leave my scrap paper here because we are going to make a couple of more messes. So I'll bring in some of the die cuts that I made for this project. And I'll explain this part of it. These die cuts that I used, I don't know if you saw that, I used them in the background. These and these came from the Flourish die set. And they are just really pretty, delicate, floral, flourishy type images. Here is that set right there. I used this one and this large one. So I cut those out. This one from our copper foil paper, this one from Pool Party. This one is inked up some. I'm going to show you that in just a second. This one, this is from our, these are just amazing, these butterfly dies. This is from, it's called Butterfly Beauty. I'll show you right here. So I used this big die, but there's another one just as large. And then lots of little butterflies and a few few little nice coordinating images to add to the butterflies. So we'll talk about the butterfly first. I cut out one of these from copper foil paper, which you can see right here, and take it from me. Do not put this in the way you would normally put it in and cut it. Put your copper foil paper down. Put down a piece of wax paper. Then put your die on top. Because this die is so large, it's hard for the die cutting machine to cut it through all the way. So I ran it through a couple of times this way. Then I turned it sideways. I ran it through a few times. Uh, with one or two of my pieces, I had to add another piece of cardstock underneath and run that through a couple of times to get all of these little pieces and parts cut. There's a lot there to get cut, so it takes takes a little bit of effort to make that happen. So the re after I ran it through so many times, this foil paper did not want to come out of this die. So the second time I did it, I tried it with the wax paper, popped right out of there. It was fantastic. And actually it cut the little pieces out better as well. So use your wax paper when you use this die. And... The second one, so you cut one out of the copper foil paper, you're going to cut another one out of watercolor paper, which this is some of our watercolor paper. After you have them cut, you are going to trim all these little guys apart. So here you can see I already cut apart my watercolor paper one. I also already did some of the water coloring, which we'll talk about that in just a second. But here I will show you how I trim these apart. These are some of our snips, 
have little snips that are fantastic. These are great for doing trimming and fussy cutting. So we'll cut them apart. As I'm doing this, I'm trying to round the edges so that you don't notice the, the rough cuts on the edge, which most likely once this all goes together, you wouldn't notice anyway, but because I'm mildly a perfectionist, I wanna make sure I don't have those rough edges that you can probably see right there. So get all those cut apart. That's what I did to my watercolor paper butterflies. Now I'm going to show you how to do this watercoloring. And the colors of ink I used, I'll bring in here in just a moment. Guess I'll get these out of the way. I have Sahara Sand. Mint Macaron. Blackberry Bliss and Blueberry Bushel. So as you can see, I have my ink pads open. I didn't fold them all the way closed and there's ink here on the lids. So if you don't know how to do that with your ink pad still closed, you wanna squeeze it from top, this side to this side, top to bottom. And when you open it up, if you pressed hard enough, you'll have some ink there. Some people don't like this cause it gets a little messy. If you prefer, you can press one of your clear blocks onto your ink pad, and then you can pick up your color from this the same way as what I am doing. So you need an aqua painter and you need stamp and spritzer. You could, I guess technically you could add water to this just with your aqua painter, but the spritzer is quick and easy and I love it. So I'm gonna spritz this whole thing with just some water get the whole thing wet. That way, when I start to add my color to this, it is going to start moving around right away. And I just see how that is already moving around. I just love watercoloring. You can do so many neat things with watercoloring. And there is, no, nothing is perfect about this. The, the one I'm making right now is going to look completely different from the one I made before. And that is, I guess, one of the neat things about watercolor. It's never going to be perfect, never going to get to the same. So I'm going to pick up, I want to use all four of my colors on this big one. Between colors, I just wipe this off on my scrap paper to clean it out. Now I'm going to add a little bit of that mint macaron. And on the edges, I want a bunch of this blueberry bushel. Something I found out when I was doing this is I really like the deeper colors better. I kept going back and adding more and more of the purples and the blues to try to get, get them really dark. So when you choose colors to do this, you may even want to choose darker colors than I used if, if you like the look of the darks. I'm going to get rid of some of that extra ink. Then I'll go back here and blend the mint and the blue together a little bit better. It's one cool thing about the watercolor paper is it's kind of like a working palette. Even when your ink is on there, it's not permanent. If you add water or add more color, it's going to keep, keep moving and changing as long as you want it to, as long as you want to keep adding color. So I think I'll add more purple because you can pretty much never have too much purple. And I really like that. I think that looks very nice. So there, I think you can see the five. I'm going to leave those and let that one to dry. Clean my aqua painter out. And now we are going to go back to that background 
and see if it is dry enough for us to move on with the next step. And it is perfectly dry for the next step. So I am going to make this the top because I, I wanted mine to be lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. I am going to grab a couple of stamps. And the Sahara Sand ink again. I had my stamp set here to show you which set these were from. And it is hiding from me. It is called, I forget what it's called, textures? Something about textures. I will have my materialist, when I put this on YouTube, I'll have my materialist with it, and also when I put it on my blog. So I am going to stamp one of these here, and one right here. Again, this is that Sahara Sand ink, and I, as you can probably tell, I just wanted this card to have tons of texture so now with this dot one i want to stamp this a few times i'll stamp once i'll stamp a second time to get that lighter color do that and i think i'll stamp off once here and once right there so that is our stamping now the next part this is the fun part this is where it gets a little crazy as far as the mess goes. I didn't realize how crazy this got a little bit ago until <laughs> I started looking around after I did this and I had paint everywhere. Here we go. Gallery Grunge is that stamp set I got those texture stamps from. I love, love sets like this that you can just add a little bit to the background and it doesn't take away from whatever you're putting on top. So we are going to use some of our frost white shimmer paint and our aqua painter. And if you want to, you could put some of this onto your silicon craft sheet. I am just going to dip right in here, but I want to make sure, see, I just tried to clean out my aqua painter again. I want to make sure it is nice and clean because I don't want to turn my frost white shimmer paint purple. So I am going to dip right in here until you can see I got some of the tip of that into the paint. Now I'm going to squeeze this because I want lots of water in the tip. And when I did this earlier, it would start dripping. I think I have a drip coming. There's one that just dropped. So I've got plenty of water in and I'm just going to start tapping this to drop that color onto, or drop the paint, I should say, onto my background. Now, I hope you can see what's happening. I think you can. It doesn't all have to be really thick like that is, so, so there's still paint on there. I'm going to squeeze a little more water in, do some more splattering. These will be a little bit less, uh, less thick, I guess. A little bit thinner splatters. So we are getting lots of lovely splatters here. This shimmer paint is so pretty. You can, I've not used it before where I do what I'm doing just with not as much paint and just take your painter and paint onto a part of your project that you want it to be really pretty and shimmery. So you can use it that way. That's, this is another way you can use it with your aqua painter. Now you are going to have to clean this out. I wiped it all over my scrap paper. I also used a paper towel to kind of get some of that shimmer out. If you do this, you may have shimmers coming out of this for quite a while. I don't have any problem with that if mine does that. But when, so after you do this, make sure you're in a place that you can wipe up the mess. I did this earlier and then I realized it was on my wall. It was on, it was on my shirt. It was everywhere. So just be aware of that. But you can see those splatters that this is going to take a little while to dry, but it's just another texture. Love the little shimmer that that adds. Now I'm going to do a tiny amount of cleanup and 
get some of these out of the way. Now I showed you how to prepare this. Here is another base that I prepared earlier and this is the one I'm going to work with from now on. So what we are going to do first is attach these. You know what? I'm going to take a time out. I'm changing my process while we speak. I'm going to show you how to sponge these and then I'm going to repurpose my sponge for something else. So these are some of the other die cuts I showed you that I wanted to put in the background from that flourish die set and I didn't want the color to be as bright as the pool party. I wanted it to be again have more texture, be a little darker. I feel like I'm turning into Bob Ross. I have no idea what's going on here. I wanted to make something really cool for this uh, blog hop that I'm going to be in which is what this is for and it just got crazy. I'm using 20 techniques and all sorts of things. Okay, so just add a little bit. That was my Sahara Sand ink, and I sponged it a little bit to give it a little grunge. Now that I am done with that, I am going to show you a really handy way to ink your die cuts. These little detailed die cuts that it's kind of a pain to try to put glue on the back. So I'm going to show you, if you put some of your multi-purpose glue, this glue, by the way, is amazing, best stuff ever, put some of that on your silicone craft sheet and grab some scrap paper and you want to swirl this around a little bit. You don't need a lot, just a little bit and just sponge the back of your die cut. While you're doing this, make sure you do not move your die cut. Otherwise, you're going to have the glue from your paper smearing around onto the front of your project. Lay that on there. Press it down. Sometimes the multi-purpose glue, you need to press it a couple of times. That one end doesn't want to stick for some reason. Now, I want to find a new spot on my paper because that part is all sticky. And I'm going to do that again with this one. I'll trim this one down because it does not need to be the full length. I've got inky fingers. I've got sticky fingers. Like I said, today is not a neat project and that just moved so make sure it's in place give it a good press and we have those on there now that those are on i am going to do the same thing with these flourishes so i'll turn them over to the back side As you can see, I'm also getting some of my Sahara Sand ink onto the back of these because I'm using the sponge that I use for my Sahara Sand ink. I would normally use a sponge just for the glue, but I forgot to grab one. And one more. Looks like I got the perfect amount of glue. And like I said, you do not need much at all for this. Just a little tiny bit. And we'll put that right there, I think. So just press everything down, make sure it's attached good. If little ends pop up, I am not worried about that at all. I actually like that like when some of it pops up. 
I know that the rest of it's going to be attached, so I'm not worried about it if a few of these little guys pop up. Okay, where are we? Let's go ahead and I'll show you how to assemble the the sturdy part of this, the part that holds it all together and and how you'll be able to, to attach it to the wall. So I use this is some of the cardstock that comes in our paper packs. You are not going to see this side, so I wasn't worried about that, but I cut a piece the same size as this, five and a half by eight and a half. And we are going to glue this to what we've already prepared. You could have done this earlier. You can do this part whenever you want to. You lay that on there, give it a nice press. And I got too much glue in my one corner. So I'm going to try to get rid of that. Okay, so now we have this prepared and it's nice and sturdy. Next, I will attach the hanger up here for how we will be able to hang this to the wall. And this is some of our... I'm looking for it here, braided burlap trim. So on one end, I am going to attach a glue dot to the back side. Press that on. It doesn't matter how far down this comes, as long as it doesn't come farther down than this piece of chipboard right here. So then figure out how you want your ribbon to lay and which side you want the glue dot on over here. And then put your glue dot on there. And give that a good press. If you want, you could use glue just to make sure these stay put. But I am pretty confident those glue dots are really strong. So I'm pretty sure that is going to work just fine. Now, I have some pieces of chipboard. This is also from some of our other cardstock that I cut down. It's one inch wide. I have two here that are six inches long. I have one that is five and a half inches long, which really this one could be six as well if you wanted it to be. This one is the only one that needs to be shorter, and it just needs to lay in between your ribbons. So I think mine measures four and a half inches long. So we want to put some glue on these. I want a decent amount of glue on here, but not near the edges because I don't want it to shoot out the sides. So lay that on there. I'm going to lay another piece on top and just to give it a little bit of something to attach to at the ends. This, this ribbon, I don't know if you can tell, it's very thick. So I'm trying to add some more thickness here that that cardboard can cling to at the edges. So I added a couple of dimensionals. Now I'm going to add one of these pieces that is six inches. And I don't want glue at the very ends because it's going to be hanging off. And I don't want that sticky glue to be hanging out forever. Okay, now I just want to make sure I got that lined up good. That is super. So I'm going to let that lay to dry while I put on this one at the bottom. So I'll put on the five and a half inch one first. But like I said, this one could be six inches as well if you wanted it to be. You just would want to make sure not to attach or not to put glue down on the very edges. I have got glue, I got everything all over me. When I was making my first one, I ended up with shimmer paint all over, so then I had shimmer paint smears everywhere. And you may want to keep a little rag handy to keep your hands clean. Or, better yet, grab my Stampin' Chammy. 
and that all looks good. So if you want to, I would suggest laying this upside down or either laying something on it this way or flipping it upside down and doing that just to make sure everything stays put and dries flat. Okay, we are we are getting there. Now we just need to add some of our pretty pieces to the front and this is going to be done. So the next thing we want to do, I kept adding more and more stuff because I thought it was going to make it awesome. So uh, the next thing I wanted to add was this linen thread. I love this linen thread. It matches this kind of rustic look of the ribbon and the chipboard that we have here perfectly. So here I have 30 inches of our linen thread. And if you can see that, you see how it still has some of the kinks in it from being on the package? Kind of an easy trick that I learned to get that out is just squeeze it real tight and pull all the way down to the ends. And now we do not have any more kinks. So that's a handy little trick. I wanted to make the center of the thread right behind where this let your dream soar piece is going to be. So I will estimate where that is going to be. I'm going to put down some snail and leave a loose end hanging out. Press that down into that adhesive and just start wrapping loops. We'll make this one different. I'm not trying to make them the same by any means. It's nice to have some variation. And I'll have this end sticking out up here. Press those down really well. And we've got our thread done. So the next thing will be, I'll show you these pieces. I die cut these using our Stitched Shapes die cuts, which I use all the time. Uh, this greeting is from our Above the Clouds stamp set, which is really nice. It's got some good greetings in it for special occasions or just encouragement in general. So I thought Let Your Dream Soar would be really great for graduation. And I embossed this one with our bronze embossing powder. And I cut this out of our copper foil paper. I want to put this on with glue. I, I used glue on most of this because I really wanted to make sure this stuff all stayed put. So we'll stick that down. If you have a minute to spare, I would suggest putting something heavy on top of that to let it sit for a couple of minutes. And then... We'll attach this greeting using some dimensionals. We got to give this thing some more texture, right? Some more, uh, some more dimension and texture because it doesn't have enough. Now we are down to attaching just butterflies and pearls. So we are almost there. So if you, what I did the first time is going to be a little bit different from, what I, different from what I do this time since I'm trying to do this quickly. The first time I put glue just in the centers of the butterflies, I laid the watercolor piece over top and sometimes I offset them just a little bit. I usually do just a little and then I let those dry. Then I came back and I glued the whole thing to the paper. On this one, I am going to attach the copper pieces first. And then I'll come back and I'll lay those other ones over top. And on this one, I have one extra butterfly. On my first one, I used one butterfly for the card. So this one, I have one extra butterfly that I am going to attach here. So these I'm going to lay flat with the glue. And I am only going to put glue onto the large pieces. Just the wide edges. And 
lay those right on. Give them a chance to dry. It does pop up a little bit until this starts to dry, so you may just have to press it down a couple of times until it starts to cling, and that is fine. Do this big one next, and I want to make sure not to put glue out here on this wing because then it would be trying to glue to the bottom. So I'm going to get this stuck on here. And we'll put some on this little guy. These butterflies in this die set are just amazing. There are so many of them. They're all different sizes and shapes, and they have so much detail. Where do I want this? I'm going to put him down here. And I'll do this one. Hi, Mommy. Hi, sweetie. That looks pretty. Thank you. I hope somebody else thinks that. Maybe. If you like this, make sure you like, comment. Once it gets on YouTube, you can share it. Let me know what you think. If you have ideas for future projects, you can let me know that. Okay, so we've got those attached down. And now I want to attach the watercolor ones, but I'm only going to put glue down the centers, like I mentioned. And let them lay there. And once that glue dries, I will be able to pop the wings up. to really make them look like they're flying. And they want to slip around until the glue is dry, so you just have to be careful with it. those on there so we'll let all of that dry the very last thing I did was add a few pearls so we will do that and then we will be done and then you're gonna make the card nope I said I wasn't gonna show the card today since the card is basically the same thing as what I just showed Sometimes I like to put a couple little pearls together. And I want a little hefty on the I want a little hefty on the pearls because where do I want this one? Because I felt like it, I guess. Where's your boo? Okay, so I'll show that to you up close, and then I'll bring the card back in, and that is it for today. So, here you go. I hope you can see the sparkles in the background. I hope you can see all that detail. But those are the two hangings, and if I didn't lose it in my mess of everything going on here, here is that card one more time. So thanks for joining in today. I hope you learned something from all those little techniques and tricks and things. Let me know what you think. I'll see you again next time.